I, I just don't really get why Drake May is kind of getting a lot of hate right now. He is, you know, from a tools, traits, skill set, and size, and, and overall athletic ability. In a lot of drafts, he might be the number one overall pick. All of 6'4 plus, big, tall, strong. He He's more of the Carson Palmer, Joe Flacco, Drew Bledsoe body type, Justin Herbert body type, yeah. than maybe some of these other guys where you're like, is he six foot? Is he 6'1", six 6'1 one, six one and a half? You know, did he have lifts in his shoes? I don't know. But I like what I see, and the dude launches the ball. Okay, I'm going to give you the number one pick. I'm going to, you're the Bears. You got the number one pick. Right now? Right now. I, I'm a huge Drake May fan. He, I, I will not be able to the phone and thinking he's going to be in conversation for the number one pick. I promise you that. He's He's got a lot of big Ben in his game. This year's NFL draft class boasts one of the most talented groups of quarterbacks we've seen in decades. Caleb Williams has earned plenty of hype over the recent years, but he's not the only one making defensive coordinators nervous. And it seems that everybody's forgotten about Drake May, who's another potential prospect who might surpass all of the quarterbacks, including Jaden Daniels and Caleb Williams. If New England wants to take Drake May at three, they better have a free agent already signed. Drake May has to be under Jordan Love type of timeline, Drake May has to sit. And these are the things that they aren't telling you about Drake May. The star power shown from Drake May at an early age at Myers Park High School in Charlotte made him an obvious choice for the starting role, and his athletic prowess helped him stand out from the crowd. In his junior season, May passed for 3,500 yards, 50 touchdowns, and just two interceptions. He shined brightly under the Friday Night Lights, standing tall as an intelligent pocket passer who also had a knack for making exciting and creative plays on the move. And look, in high school, there were not many kids that could hang with him. And as a result of this, he wasn't needed in the second half of a lot of his games. Like, could you actually imagine what his stats could have been if he played the full four quarters in high school? Drake May's athleticism shouldn't necessarily come as a surprise though. He comes from a family who has produced their fair share of athletes, starting with Drake's father, Mark May, who was the quarterback for North Carolina University in the late 1980s. I guess the four boys all superstar athletes dad played quarterback in college i like that I, what do we get when we go to uh, dog breeders we want to know their dad was a champion this and a yeah. mom was a champion that yeah. and you know it's just like horses right you're like okay what do we got his brothers also made a name for themselves by putting together an impressive college basketball careers with drake also trying his hand at the sport like i mean while in high school too drake showed his versatility to also average 16.1 points and 11.3 rebounds in his junior season on the basketball court 11 plus rebounds a game 11 plus rebounds a game. Rebounding is an attitude. Rebounding is anticipation, going to box out another guy. Rebounding tells me this dude's tough. Yeah. He he wants it. You yeah. bet you gotta want a rebound. It's not just an accident. So that showed me a little something. Then you watch him play. Holy smokes. The incredible 3,500 yard season and 50 touchdown season as the quarterback for Myers Park firmly put Drake May in the conversation as one of the nation's most intriguing prospects. For his efforts though, he was recognized as a four-star recruit, the ninth quarterback in the class, and the 56th best player in 2021. And I mean, the kid got so much college attention, but no offer was bigger than the one from Nick Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Like, I mean, that tells you all you need to know about the resume he had put together. Despite the strong family ties to North Carolina, Drake committed to becoming the newest quarterback of the Alabama's a Crimson Tide, removing his local college from the running because of the dismal track record over their recent years. And I mean, the kid had a point. The final two years of the Larry Fedora tenure at North Carolina had produced just five wins to 18 losses, making the allure of Nick Saban look even more appealing. Unfortunately, that appeal quickly flipped on its head when Bryce Young of all people decided to make a late switch from USC to Alabama. This coincidence would turn into fortunes for the Tar Heels, who had produced two winning seasons under their new head coach, Mack Brown. The university's other new addition, Sam Howell, was enjoying a stellar run as the starting quarterback. So all of a sudden, the option of staying local was back on the table. Not many people turn away Nick Saban, but that's exactly what Drake May did. With North Carolina's prospects now much brighter in a tricky quarterback competition waiting for him in Alabama, Drake May decommitted to Alabama and instead opted to become the future of the North Carolina Tar Heels. Not only would this prove to be a great move in his future, but also he kept the lineage of playing as a Tar Heel 
and his family too. May's college career started as a third stringer as he registered his first year of action. Sam Howe was the immovable starter at the time, having put together two years of excellent tape for the Tar Heels. But that didn't mean fans weren't piqued by the four-star recruit and wanted to see what he could do. Drake is a, a competitor. I, th I think that's the biggest thing that I like about Drake. I don't think he's scared of anything. He's a very confident guy a great leader and he he just balls. So in a rainy spring game, Drake May got his first taste of on-field action for the Tar Heels, completing three passes for 18 yards and rushing for 24 more yards on five carries. The play that really got everyone excited though was the beautiful deep pass that just whistled out of bounds. It was a limited sample size, but it hadn't gone unnoticed. The former UNC linebacker Shaquille Rashid took to Twitter to ask, I may be jumping the gun here, but when does the Drake May Heisman campaign start? 22 two or 23. And as it turns out, he had a pretty good eye for talent. After getting next to no action as a freshman, Drake May's opportunity to show what he could do arrived in 2022 when he was handed the reins of the Tar Heels offense and made the starter. He did have to battle to get the starting role, but it didn't take long for May to prove that his coaches had made the right decision. In his debut, May completed 29 of 37 attempts for 294 yards and five touchdowns. His yardage improved to 352 yards and four touchdowns touchdowns in week two in a game where he also ran for 76 yards and another score. Like, I mean, that's just a casual 777 yards and 10 total touchdowns across his first two games as a starter. Like, I think at that point, it was safe to say that the North Carolina Tar Heels seriously had a great player on their hands. The five touchdowns thrown in his debut were the most by any Tar Heel quarterback ever, and the threat he posed with his legs instantly made him a thrilling dual threat danger. This was on full display all season season long, like everything he was doing was putting it on display, but it headlined with an incredible 519 total yard performance against rivals Wake Forest, in which May's four total touchdowns lifted the Tar Heels to a narrow 36-34 win. He was dazzling with his powerful arm and surprised people with his prowess as a rusher. May's 698 yards on the ground made him the team's leading rusher, combining nicely with 4,321 passing yards and 38 touchdowns to make him one of the most most exciting players in the college game. While at UNC, May delivered 76 big time throws according to PFF, which is the most of any quarterback over those two years. Like I mean, fans had become accustomed to watching him launch missiles downfield while off balance or on the move. His outrageous highlight reel of plays can be compared to the likes of Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, and Justin Herbert in the NFL. He's physically talented and then also like, like uh, size, ability, how he sees things to Herbert and Mahomes and Josh Allen. Those guys that are like every bit of, you know, 6'4 to 6'6, run crazy, see it well, you know, insanely competitive, like He's gonna be like that. Like all of them, May has shown a consistent ability to make stunning deep passes with incredible accuracy. And honestly, it's this aspect of his game that is the most exciting and will make him a top 10 quarterback as soon as he takes to the NFL. And another important thing that not a lot of people talk about is how he had just seven interceptions over that season. Like, I mean, despite it being his first season as a starter and honestly opting to pass the ball aggressively downfield, he was making sure that he was limiting the turnovers he had too. And like, even over his three years that he played at UNC, it's a common theme that you see with all of his stat lines. That's what makes him even more appealing to go into the NFL game is that he doesn't make those mistakes that rookie quarterbacks are going to. It was a stunning start to Drake May's time at UNC. His 4,321 yards had just set a new single season school record and his 38 season touchdowns tied Sam Howell at the top of the single season touchdowns leaderboard. He was named the ACC player of the year and recognized as a first team all ACC player, but could he keep up the momentum in year two? In 2023, Drake May did have to adapt to getting a new offensive coordinator, but I mean, hell, the kids still played off the charts. Like, yes, they weren't as eye-catching as the year before, but they still managed to start the season 6-0. The team scored over 31 points in every single one of those games, including more than 40 in four of them. This was particularly impressive given that the Tar Heels were without their number one wide receiver for much of this stretch, with new recruit Devontae Walker not making his debut until October.
Uber. May's ability to rack up stats and wins without a clear-cut number one weapon was impressive, and Tez Walker's addition to the lineup certainly produced some firepower in the second half of the season. In their second game together, May and Walker combined for 132 yards and three touchdowns on just six catches. One week later, another 146 yards and a score came on 11 catches, with Walker giving May a very useful target to aim for. Despite putting up 699 yards and seven touchdowns across eight games together, the second half of the season was underwhelming for the Tar Heels. Losses to the likes of Georgia Tech, Clemson, and NC State removed any hopes of postseason action, and a slightly less effective offense meant that May's production dipped to 3,608 yards and 24 touchdowns with 9 interceptions. He was named a second team all ACC player, wrapping up a college career that saw him pass for 8,018 yards and 63 touchdowns in just two years as the starter. Both of these numbers place him in the top five of the school's all time leaderboard. Like, I mean, despite the numbers not being as quite dazzling as his year before, he still was consistently one of the best players in college football. PFF went on to grade him over 90 in both of the seasons he was a starter, and he had proven that he was honestly a worthy dual threat prospect. While he is not as fast as Jaden Daniels, Drake May proved his effectiveness as a rusher by notching 1,147 yards and 16 touchdowns over the last two years. Like, I mean, when you combine the ability of his rushing capability with the arm talent he has to reach any spot on the field, that is a NFL defensive coordinator's nightmare. Drake May truly does have all the tools needed to dominate at the next level. His college tape is littered with examples of jaw-dropping off-balance throws, but he can also deliver on the important in-structure plays as well. He has very good pocket presence and can hit windows over the middle of the field with ease. It is this type of composure and elite quarterbacking knowledge that sets him apart from Caleb Williams at the top of the 2024 draft class. And honestly, I'd say the ceiling for Drake May in the NFL is very high. And just looking at stats and the tape, he honestly seems like a more well-rounded prospect coming into the league as a rookie than Jaden Daniels or Caleb Williams. Because when you look at their tape, they honestly rely more on their athleticism rather than their football IQ. And look, don't get me wrong, that works in the college game, but once you step it up to the next level, that's not going to work all the time in the NFL, and you're gonna have to be good at the fundamentals with your football IQ. Like Drake May boasts all the physical and mental characteristics that you look for in a quarterback. And it honestly doesn't come around that often. So when you have the chance to take a quarterback like him, you don't want to miss that opportunity. The NFL has leaned much more towards dynamic dual threat athletes at the quarterback positions. And Drake May provides the perfect characteristics to tick all the boxes. His big frame helps him launch balls into the deepest pockets of the field, and his ability to maintain high levels of accuracy while on the move or off balance will make him one of the most dangerous passers in the NFL immediately. He's also proven that he can damage you with his legs, rushing for over 1,100 yards across his two years in college. Now, while he isn't as quick twitch as someone like Jaden Daniels, he is still absolutely fast enough and has the size to challenge defenders in the NFL. And honestly, in comparison, Comparison to the other two quarterbacks at the top of the draft, May is the perfect hybrid. He is an all-around package that looks destined for a glittering career of Super Bowl wins and future Hall of Fame recognition. But I want to know what you guys think. Where does he rank in this year's draft class among the quarterbacks? Let me know down in the comment section below, and as always, I will catch you guys in the next one.